Do you sense there's a massive pressure within Donegal to deliver? Yeah, look, but you see, it's a Martin. I'd be very interested to hear <clears throat> what you have to say about this, right? Declan Bonner was going for three in a row. And, like, you know, there was a point in the 13th minute in that Ulster uh, final last year where Killian Brady was black carded. And Donegal outscored Calvin in that 10 minutes where Killian Brady was off 7 1, right? And it looked, it, that left it then, what, 9 3? And it looked, or 9 6, and it looked like Donegal is just going to sail home here. Uh, the, Paddy McBurty been taken off in the 57th minute. Like, uh, you say that he's come really into form, and he, he has absolutely, it's, it's almost been the making of him, of Michael Murphy's injury, because Michael Murphy's so durable and a quick healer in between games, even if he has a niggle, he, he tends to shake it off very fast. But because he hasn't been there, and Paddy has had to, and Paddy has been, he kicked two from play out of the last four scores against Armagh, uh, and he was just coming on the loop every single time. But I just wonder, like, Paddy was taken off in that game. Why? Because Paddy wasn't able to kind of push forward onto his man for the kickouts. And Raymond Galligan was getting those kickouts every time for Calvin. Then they're creating an overlap, getting that ball out. And maybe Bonner and Rochford just thought we're going to get somebody else in fresher here who can push up on the kickout and then we'll, we'll, we'll get home, we'll, we'll get over the line. Um, so that would have been... Yeah, a it, it, it was late in the game, actually, I think, when they took him off, um, Declan. It was about the, the 58 minute or so. But what was more noticeable in that game with Donegal is that, you know, we talk, we've we talked quite a bit about Michael Murphy. Michael Murphy only scored a point from playing that game. Hmm. Now, I, I thought one of the success, the success stories uh, for Cavan last year was their fullback, was it, um, what's his name, Park Faulkner. Faulkner. Mm. Yeah, like he had a fine game that day. But I, I just think that when Murphy's influence is diminished, when Murphy's influence is reduced in some, it, 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 you know, to a fraction of what they would hope to have it, then Donegal uh, will struggle. And um, in that game, if you want a proof of that, like Donegal only got a return, I think, of 12 points in that Ulster final. Uh, Cavender, OK, um, winning by 113, finished a much stronger. But the taking off of McBerty certainly uh, was a factor because he had scored four, two from play by that time. And it's a little bit like in the league match uh, a couple of weeks ago in Clonus when Porrick Joyce took off, was it Walsh and Finnerty, the two leading scorers at the time, when they were five points up and all of a sudden no left the door open for uh, for Monaghan. Maybe there was an element of that by taking off uh, McBrearty in, in the Ulster final last year. Mm. But Martin, also, can I ask you, that you see, uh, like Declan Bonner has been very successful. I know that, you know, they're just, the, they should have beaten Tyrone and Barry Buffet in, in 2018, but Tyrone's bench was just awesome that day. The contribution they made was brilliant. Uh, the year after with the Super 8s, like there was a couple of real humdingers. Uh, they played Kerry in, in one of it, and, and, and it sort of became Michael Murphy and Ray McHugh against Kerry. Um, there was an, an Orr McFadden Ferry, I think, got injured. He was doing really well in that game. But, you know, they just haven't got over through that, that Super 8 series. If it had been traditional quarterfinals and made a progress to an all semi final. But I don't think there's anyone in Donegal that's exactly leaping out of their skin to be the next manager or, or any kind of soundings like that. I think in general, they look at Bonner and they see, they see Stephen Rochford on the line and they're, they're pretty happy with with the management, like, you know, the, the Donegal follow. Well, they, they seem to be, like from my contacts up at home, uh, they seem to be, speak very positively uh, about Declan Bonner. And I know Stephen Rochford from down here, he, he works in, in Castle Bar here, and I, I occasionally run into him. But he would be very, very, very uh, positive about the uh, what he's working with in Donegal. I, you know, why would you, why would you in Donegal, it kind of get rid of a manager of the calibre of Declan Bonner, a legend in the county, like an All-Ireland winner and that, and maybe replace him with somebody who has less ability and less maybe pedigree, so to speak. I think Donegal at the moment are in a good place. I do think myself that their Division 1 status year on year playing the better teams like Kerry and Dublin has stood to them. And again, you'll see it will stand to them this weekend. And, you know, the, the next game after that, then, if that was to be against Derry, I wouldn't be maybe as kind of warm in my favouritism or in my talk about Donegal in, 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 in you know, with that possible encounter against Derry.
Join the Our Game Supporters Club at Patreon for five euros per month to get audio podcasts of the Hurling and Football Show and much more exclusive material.